right, guys, we're back again. World Health News with Dr. Samadhi. I'm the chair of urology at Lenox Hill Hospital. We're bringing you not just the medical news from U.S., but from all over the world. And I'm bringing the expert in the field who really know what they're doing and you deserve better and to make sure that you get not just the expertise, but also about medical apps, how to improve your quality of health, and also about talk about the politics. For the next 45 minutes, if you have questions, call 877-970-2999. If we don't get to you, you can call my office at 212-365-5000. And everything is going to go on samadhimd.com, samadhimd.com. We're here with uh, our colleague from Huntington Hospital, part of North Shore LIJ, and I'm also proud to be part of that system from Lenox Hill. How, I don't know how many hospitals we have. Every week, <laughs> um, Mr. Dowling is buying another hospital, so I think we're up to 21 or 22, but uh, it's, it's growing. It's a great healthcare system. We have the director of colorectal surgery at Huntington Hospital, Dr. David Riva Dinero. Dr. Riva Dinero. Perfect. He does a lot of robotic surgery for colon cancer. We spoke about colon cancer that affects about 140,000 men and women out there. About 50,000 die from this disease. If you catch it early, it's treatable. And you look for blood in the stool, change of caliber in your stool, and, and weight loss, and many other things. So, David, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for being here. And tell us a little bit about screening. Who should get colonoscopy? I talked a little bit about Cologuard uh, last week, and who should get what. That it would be great. Well, good morning, Dr. Samadhi. Thank you for having me. My what pleasure. a great show. Thank um, you. And thank you for bringing the awareness to the public about March being Colon Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, so there's a big initiative in March to get the word out that this is an extremely preventable but yet curable process if someone is diagnosed with it. So the prevention, as you had your primary doctor earlier on the show, Prevention is key, you know, so a good healthy diet and high in fruits and fiber and vegetables and low in red meat is very important. We know that certainly there are genetic components associated with this. A, a strong family history of other cancers. You mentioned breast cancer and being associated with prostate cancer. We feel the same way in colon cancer. If you have an early diagnosis of uterine, ovarian, gastric, renal cancers, breast cancer, then you should probably be screened for colon cancer as well. Are you seeing the same kind of changes in screening in colon cancer also? I know with breast cancer and prostate cancer, there's a lot of controversy, discussion about who and sh uh, what, what age you should be getting screened. Is that what's going on in colon cancer too? Uh, there is, uh, although I think, you know, there has been a, a tremendous positive impact about getting the word about screening colonoscopy. That's right. And we saw that when Katie Couric had her colonoscopy many years ago on Good Morning America. We saw that Katie, Katie Couric effect happen where people just came and had their colonoscopies done. The celebrity factor is absolutely, always helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. And we've seen, unlike other cancers, we've seen a, a downward trend in the number of deaths related to colon cancer. So we're making great strides in terms of this. And it has to do with awareness. It has to do with screening colonoscopy. So anybody at the age of 50 or over should have a screening colonoscopy. If you have a strong family history, you should have it done, done earlier. If you have any symptoms and you mention, yes, blood in the stool, that is never normal. Anemia, never normal. Changes in the caliber or the consistency of your bowel movements, you should see a physician to see if you, get your, you should get evaluated for a colonoscopy or other methods. You mentioned Cologuard. As tell, long as something is this, done, right. I think that's the important thing. Look, I think people are scared of that PrEP. The truth is that that PrEP is a little difficult. Sometimes it causes bloating and abdominal pain. And I also found out that 50% of people over the age of, I'm sorry, 25% of people over the age of 50 are still not getting colonoscopy, which is unbelievable, either from lack of knowledge or education or they're afraid of those preps. Can Cologuard play, play a role at least to get the first foot in by getting tested, how accurate it is, and exactly what kind of test is Cologuard? Well, so Cologuard is looking at genetic abnormalities in the actual stool. And it has been approved now as a screening modality. Now, we know that the gold standard is colonoscopy. Absolutely. But colonoscopy is an invasive procedure. And there are, unfortunately, patients who have complications related to colonoscopy. 
there are patients who will never have a colonoscopy. So therefore, there should be other tests that should be done. Cologuard is one of them. Virtual colonoscopy is another test that is acceptable as well. And certainly, we're fortunate enough in the tri-state area that we are surrounded by really wonderful healthcare systems and professionals. But patients in other areas of the country that have limited access to healthcare, uh, guaiac stools or cards where you can test microscopic blood in combination with other tests like a sigmoidoscopy is also acceptable. Again, I think in a tri-state area, colonoscopy is a gold standard, but there are other things like Cologuard, like virtual colonoscopy that is acceptable. We're speaking to my colleague, Dr. David Brivo De Nero, Director of Colorectal Surgery at Huntington Hospital, who is the expert in colon cancer. We just heard from him about screening and how important it is to screen and get your colonoscopy. And for a lot of people who need to reach him, we're going to put his information. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to talk to him about robotic surgery. Given the fact that he's Italian, he deserves a nice Italian music. And here we go. 